guide in this video I'm going to show you how to create this fiber optic scene using Yenobox nodes 3 I will be using Apple motion to create this but you can pretty much follow along with any of those other applications that Yenobox nodes 3 is compatible with before diving into the tutorial I recommend that you check out www.becraftmath.com and underneath the animation tab if you go to Yenobox this is where I will have all of my Yenobox tutorials I'll post those here as well as on my YouTube channel in Apple Motion, I already have the Nodes 3 generator added, and this fiber optic scene that we're going to create, if you have browsed the presets that come with Nodes 3, the fiber optic scene is in there. However, I'm going to show you how to create this from scratch, and ultimately, hopefully, this will help you become more familiar with the plugin. So by default, we have this circular form, and that's exactly what we want. And let's go ahead and enable the lines for this. However, for these lines, we do not want them connecting each node. What we want is a line coming off of each node and it's going to a single point. And this is called the free position. Let's head down to connections. And instead of serial, let's set free position. By default, this free position is going to be in the very center of our scene. Notice the X, Y, and Z are all zero. And notice we have a line going from each node right here to the center of the scene. Let's go ahead and make a few changes real quick. For the form itself, that circle, let's take the radius and maybe double this. Depending on what resolution you're in, you may want to go higher or lower. And we actually want more nodes. Instead of 40, let's go to 400. Now this looks kind of crazy, but we're about to fix everything. We have not rotated anything yet, so I want you to imagine the x-axis going along here, the y-axis here, and then the z-axis is the one as if it was popping out of the screen or going back into the screen if that makes any sense. We want to transform this form, and in that menu, let's change the rotation X. Notice if I rotate on the X axis, our form is rotating. Let's set this to around 100 degrees. So now it looks like a disc. Let's come down to that free position that we set a moment ago, and let's drag on the free position Z, and if we drag down, notice we're creating a cone. So maybe somewhere around negative 700 on my scene. Now we don't want these connections to be straight. So if we go to the lines menu, and instead of line, you can select curve line or curve two. I'm just gonna go with curved line for right now. Applying that setting, now we have what looks like the end of a trombone almost, or maybe some type of black hole, who knows. So we're getting our shape, but now we want to apply some variation in these nodes that we see here. And one way we can do that is come up to the oscillator, and let's apply a random oscillator. And what we want this random oscillator to do is all of these nodes that we see, we want them to go up some, down some, maybe closer to the center or farther away from the center. So we want to move them in all of these various directions. And a way we can do that for the oscillation axis, let's set it to XYZ. Now we don't see any change, but if we adjust the amplitude, now we're going to start seeing these nodes move around. But we definitely don't want that much. So maybe somewhere, let's start with 10 and see how that looks. How about 20? That looks pretty good. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and bump my radius up some more. Let's try 600. So we're getting closer to the look that we want. We're gonna apply some animations right here in a second to actually move these nodes up and down and in closer to the center or farther away. And we're also going to rotate the entire form as well. But for now, let's go adjust our colors. And before I adjust my colors, I want the ends of these nodes, these little dots here, I want those to be a glowing shape. That changes the look quite a bit. For our nodes color, I'm just gonna go with the blue for this tutorial. And I'm also gonna apply that same color to both the lines color and the lines in color. Now I think these actual endpoints here, these nodes, this glowing shape, we can adjust that and there's a ton of settings there that we can change. Just a few for example, we can make the bulb radius bigger. And there's plenty of other settings down here where you can adjust the halo, the corona, etc. But I'll leave that up to you to tinker around with those settings. But I did want to make these tips, these nodes, the bulb radius. I made it just a little bit bigger. And maybe the actual lines themselves, let's make those more transparent. So I'm going to take the lines opacity and the lines end opacity, and I'm going to bump them down to, say, 50%. That looks pretty good. And for the blending here, we can brighten this up here by changing the lines blending to add. Notice that brightened things up right here where the lines are overlapping. And another thing I want to do before we start animating, let's head over to the rendering tab. 
And watch what happens when I change the depth effect to opacity. Notice these nodes back here in the back of the scene. Since they're farther away from the camera, they're going to be more transparent. And now let's look at these settings here. I'm going to take this depth start distance and I'm going to set it to zero. And then I'm going to set the depth range to zero as well. What this pretty much does is it makes half of the form, this half back here, it's going to be more transparent. Whereas the front part, we can completely see that. And the reason why it's roughly halfway, to my understanding, think of the middle here. Since I haven't really moved the form up, down, left, or right, sure we did rotate it, but right here smack in the middle, our X, Y, and Z are all zero. So the way I'm comprehending this is the Z position here. And what I want to do with this is I want to take this depth range, and if I start sliding this, notice it's making the back of the scene brighter. So maybe somewhere right around there, and it's a smooth transition from completely visible to somewhat of a transparent appearance back there. Now you can also adjust this depth influence slider as well, but I think right there at default, roughly 85% looks just fine. Now let's work on some animations. The oscillator earlier, when we did this oscillator here, the X, Y, Z, a way we can actually get them to move is to use the oscillator evolution. Notice if I drag on this, notice the nodes are moving. And this is exactly what we want. Now we could keyframe this or we could animate it. And I'm going to bump the amplitude up a little bit as well. Gives them a little more range of movement. So let's go to the animation menu. And for destination one, let's select the oscillator evolution. And now if we bump this speed on up, and let's give it a play. Maybe a little more. That looks pretty good. Now let's rotate the form. If we come down to transform, if I go to the rotation Z, it's going to rotate around the Z axis, and this is exactly what we want. Now the Z axis is going up and down now because we did rotate the form earlier. Now we could keyframe this, or we can go back up to animation. For destination two, let's do transform rotation Z. I'm gonna give this a play and I'm going to start adjusting the speed of this rotation. Now, if you want it to rotate in the opposite direction, instead of a positive number, let's roll with a negative number. And there we go. Now there's tons of other things you can do to get the customized look that you want, but hopefully with a few of these tips that we've used here, you are becoming more comfortable with the plugin. And there you have it, a fiber optic scene using Yenobox Nodes 3. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.